They'd been adrift for days in a boat without an engine. This was the moment four migrants were found in the central Mediterranean. If you could support these people, possibly taking them on board and giving them water and food. 45 people had set off from Tunisia for Italy. They are the only survivors. When their boat capsized, they only survived after finding another abandoned boat at sea. The four were brought here to Lampedusa. The migrant centre on the tiny island is well above its capacity. This summer, the central Mediterranean is as deadly as ever. This was a few days ago. Clinging on to rubber rings, 57 people were rescued. Over 30 were not. We're now used to seeing these kinds of pictures, but it doesn't make them less shocking. Pushed by circumstance and desperation, thousands continue to risk the sea. Names we won't know, numbers Europe doesn't want. Italy has seen over 93,000 of these arrivals by sea so far this year. That's more than double at this point last year. Tunisia is facing a record wave of migration, overtaking Libya as the region's main launch pad. Dreaming of Europe, many are also dying in the desert. In a months-long crackdown, Tunisia has been accused of dumping migrants in no man's land without food and water, a practice they deny. Tafel Omar fled the recent outbreak in fighting in Sudan. She's pregnant. I was in Tunisia. My husband is a day labourer. We wanted to go to Italy and there was beating and insults. After that, two days ago, they took us to the borders. The following day, after we reached the borders, they took us, beat the men and left us. They walked across the merciless dunes for days, no idea of their direction. Libyan border guards found them and gave them water. Human rights groups say the Tunisian authorities are committing serious abuses against migrants. Libyan border guards are finding bodies, empty water bottles by their side. One of the world's deadliest migrant routes is busier than ever, and there are few good choices. Well, joining me now is Annalisa Camilli, a Rome-based journalist on the Internationale newspaper who covers issues surrounding migration. What was the latest, first of all, on the survivors? Uh, good evening, good evening. Uh, well, the, the four survivors arrived today uh, in, uh, in Lampedusa. Uh, they are one uh, young boy, 13 year old, a woman and two men from Ivory Coast in Guinea. Uh, well, they told, as you as you told, they told that they departed from uh, the port city of, of Sfax six days before uh, the the the, the, uh, the arrival in in Rampedusa. But uh, they say that suddenly, when uh, we we arrived uh, uh, in open sea, the the the, the small boat. Uh, were overwhelmed by a giant wave. Uh, we, we should know that in the weekend uh, there were other two shipwrecks of Lampedusa because the weather was very bad and uh, uh, with, also with bad weather people um, try to cross uh, the sea, try to arrive to the, the to the small uh, uh, island, and we thought that these 40 people that are feared dead, uh, uh, well, they are. Um, um, there were other 90 people uh, who died uh, in the in the weekend. Yes, Therefore, I mean the numbers are so big now, aren't they? I mean, 2,000 people is the estimate yeah, for this cool. year so far. So they, they are departing with uh, this small uh, um, metal boat 
without phone, for example, from Libya, they are departing with, uh, with telephone, with phone. They, they can communicate with rescuers. Uh, but from Tunisia, the, the situation is, is, uh, um, is worse because uh, basically they are using uh, uh, this metal boat that are uh, much more uh, uh, dangerous. Yes. And uh, they, they could not uh, even uh, call for rescuers. Now, how, how many uh, patrols are there then in these areas? Because the UN has been calling for an increase uh, in the vigilance of European nations in these waters because of all of these boats. Has that happened at all? Uh, unfortunately, now the Italian Coast Guard is quite alone to do this kind of rescue with some humanitarian boats. Uh, there are more or less five humanitarian boats, but in the last few years they were cr criminalized, uh, and for them uh, it is uh, quite difficult to operate uh, in the Mediterranean. For example, when uh, they rescue some people, uh, they they should reach uh, um, the very far airborne um, airborne that are very far from the search and rescue area, and uh, this is very exciting expensive for the humanitarian boats and uh, well it's very difficult for them to help the Italian Coast Guard. We should remember that in 2013 there were a, a big humanitarian mission for from uh, Italian government and then a, a big European mission that was called Triton in 2014 but all these uh, um, uh, ended uh, in 2017 yes. because of the accuse of being a pull factor. The, 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 the rescuers were accused of being a pull factor for migrants. Well, Annalisa, Camille, thank you very much indeed for your time. Jackie. Thank you. Thanks very much. It's not so much his controversial views on asylum seekers which are causing ructions in the Tory party. The senior MP Lee Anderson's claim that the government had failed to stop people crossing the channel in small boats hasn't gone down quite so well. The Immigration Minister, Robert Jenrick, took pains this morning to distance himself from that. So let's get more from our senior political correspondent, Paul McNamara. Paul. Yeah, probably best to rewind and recap a little bit here. So at the beginning of the week, young men seeking asylum started boarding the Bibby Stockholm boat off the coast of Dorset. Some didn't want to, to which the Conservative Party Deputy Chairman, Lee Anderson, said they should, quote, F off back to France. Now, a number of ministers have been asked about that quote since the beginning of the week. They've all pretty much said they don't really agree with the, with the language, but the sentiment they can understand. This morning, a minister finally said they disagreed with Lee Anderson, but about a completely different comment. Last night, Lee Anderson said that Conservative Party policy on immigration had been a failure. This morning, Robert Jemrit, the immigration minister, said, oh, that comment, oh, that comment I disagree with. Take a listen. I'm not going to sit here and make excuses to anyone. This is out of control. We're, the, you know, we're in power at the moment. I'm, I'm uh, as you say, the deputy chair of the Conservative Party. We're in government. And we have failed on this. There's, there's no doubt about it. You know, we said we're going to fix it. It is a failure. No, I, I don't accept that. This is, an so Lee unique, this is a that. uniquely challenging dish, uh, issue that we're facing. But we have the most comprehensive plan of any European country, and it's starting to bear fruit. Here's the problem for the government. Lee Anderson isn't just some backbencher mouthing off. Let's face it, that happens quite regularly. This is a Conservative Party chairman saying that Conservative policy had been a failure. This becomes a party discipline issue. I've had Tories from the right of the party who agree with Lee Anderson in principle texting me today saying, how has he kept his job? Another saying, people have been fired for far less than calling ourselves a failure. Now, the timing of this has been quite fortunate for the Prime Minister. Rishi Sunak's 5,000 miles away on holiday and hasn't had to deal with it yet. But the feeling among some backbenchers is however he deals with Lee Anderson could give us some indication as to how a general election campaign will be fought. Essentially, keep Lee Anderson in place and the gloves may well be off. Paul, thanks very much. Chris.